As a board certified dermatologist, I understand just how emotionally difficult it can be to deal with any type of hair loss or hair condition, regardless of your age, your gender, your ethnicity, your celebrity status, what you do for a living, or how strong you may be perceived. Hair loss can be devastating and there is so much misinformation floating around social media right now regarding hair loss so in this video i want to clear up some of that misinformation but most importantly provide you with actionable tips and steps that you can take if you are suffering with hair loss or if someone you love is suffering with hair loss for anyone new, hello, my name is Alexis. I am a board certified dermatologist. If you love learning about dermatology in an inclusive but welcoming environment, welcome, join us here. You can subscribe below. All right, guys, let's answer the most important question, which is what is alopecia? Alopecia is an umbrella term that just means hair loss. There are many different forms of hair loss or alopecia that are broken down into categories of non-scarring versus scarring. Hair loss is a very complex problem that can be due to external causes like your hair care practices or internal causes like medical disease, things like autoimmune or even thyroid disorders. And then there's also hair breakage or hair thinning, which can fall under the category of hair loss too. Is this a scalp issue or is it a hair issue? These are all important things that fall under the same term, alopecia. Now there are over a dozen different types of hair loss and one of the most common is known as androgenetic alopecia. This is also known as female pattern hair loss or female pattern alopecia or male pattern alopecia. There is a genetic component to this and in men it's seen at the temples bilaterally or the vertex of the scalp whereas women usually will see it with a widening of the midline part or thinning on the crown of the scalp, though it can present in many different ways. Another very common non-scarring alopecia is known as telogen effluvium. We're seeing a lot of this post-COVID. This is where people have excessive hair shedding over the entire scalp. In a normal healthy scalp, approximately 90% of normal hairs are in the antigen growth phase and 10% is in the telogen or the shedding phase. In telogen effluvium, this is when there's an increase in a percentage of follicles in this actual shedding phase. It's more than 20%. This premium mature transition of hair follicles into the shedding phase may occur in response to any type of acute physical, psychological, or physiological stress, including things like systemic illness, which is what we're seeing with COVID, or hormonal changes, including post-pregnancy. Alopecia areata is a non-scarring type of hair loss that's getting lots of attention in the media right now. It's an autoimmune disease of the hair follicles that usually results in one or two small patches of hair loss that involve either the scalp, the eyebrows, or the body hair. But in severe cases, all of the hair on the scalp is lost. That's called alopecia totalis, or all of the scalp and the body hair is lost. That's called alopecia universalis. This usually does present with a sudden onset for most patients. It can be seen in men, women, children, adults, grandparents, and all ethnicities as well. Traction alopecia is a condition most commonly seen in women and girls of African descent and is a condition of the scalp that's secondary to excessive or prolonged trauma of the actual hair shaft. The hair shaft can get weakened by various different grooming practices including chemical relaxers or really tight braids or tight ponytails. In the beginning, it actually presents as a non-scarring alopecia, but with time, if it goes untreated or if the insult continues, it can become a scarring permanent type of hair loss. African textured hair tends to be drier in nature and our curl pattern is helical in shape, making it more susceptible to breakage, especially when worn in styles that promote 
tension for prolonged periods of time. Another hair loss that is commonly seen in women of African descent is known as CCCA or central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. This type of hair loss is multifactorial. We don't know the exact cause, but we do know that there may be a genetic component as there has been a genetic defect seen in a certain gene. Triggers or aggravating things may actually exacerbate this condition or bring it about. Things like hair braiding, certain hair care practices, or anything that causes inflammation on the scalp. This was previously known as hot comb alopecia, but we no longer call it that because you can actually get this disease without ever having used a hot comb. CCCA usually presents as a progressive type of hair loss that can start as a single patch at the vertex of the scalp and then expand outward in a symmetrical pattern. In the beginning, the scarring can actually be pretty subtle, but if the disease goes unchecked and continues to progress, the scalp can become very shiny and scarred, which is why it's essential to see your dermatologist as soon as possible, which brings us to our key tip number one, making sure to get in to see the board certified dermatologist as soon as possible whenever you notice any type of hair loss. Early diagnosis is key guys. The earlier you are seen by a dermatologist and diagnosed, the more likely you are to respond to the treatment and the less likely the hair loss is to affect your quality of life. There is always hope for hair loss. Please get in to see the dermatologist. You don't want this hair loss to become permanent if it doesn't have to be. Tip number two piggybacks off of tip number one because we wanna make sure you are ready for that board certified dermatologist appointment. Make sure that you are noting any symptoms that you're having. Are you itchy? Is there pain? Is there tenderness? Do you have any fever? Make sure that you're noticing signs of fatigue and keep them written down whether in a notebook or in the notes section of your phone gather all of your personal and family medical history the derm is most likely going to ask you for all of those things make sure that you're noting whether or not there's a family history of hair loss what type of hair loss and any other medical conditions that may be what kind of medications have you been on? What kind of supplements have you taken? All of those things matter. And look back at some of the old photos so that you can make sure you have a good record of the hair care practices that you used in the past, even if it's been a while. You also want to take a good note at looking at the different products you're using because the derm is going to ask about those too. Maybe take a photo just in case you forget. Also make sure that you gather any blood work that you've had done recently or in the past because even though we're probably going to do our own blood work, it gives us a nice starting point to see whether or not there have been any deficiencies in the past and also Bring your courage, guys, because most likely we are going to do a scalp biopsy. Tip number three is to stop any style practices that have excessive tension on the scalp in any way. You want to practice responsible protective styling. Make sure that you are seeing a knowledgeable hair beautician who is aware of your hair goals and knows that you are experiencing hair loss. Also, do know that the dermatologist needs to see your entire scalp when you do see them. So if you're wearing a protective style that prevents your scalp from being completely and thoroughly evaluated, I would highly recommend you take it down before your appointment. And if while getting your hair done or after getting your hair done, there is pain or little bumps around your hair follicles, this is not a good sign. This is a sign that your hair follicles are under attack. So if you can, please loosen up that style. Tip number four is to consider taking nutritional supplements that we know help with inflammatory states or autoimmune conditions, things like zinc or vitamin D. Nutrafol is a really good hair supplement that you may want to consider. And you may want to also consider probiotics because poor gut health has been linked to hair loss. You also may want to start considering using some topical therapies that have clinical evidence that they can help hair loss. So things like minoxidil, though I do recommend you consult with a physician before starting minoxidil because it can have some side effects. There are also topicals like rosemary oil or pumpkin seed oil that do have some clinical evidence that they may be helpful for hair loss and they are much less likely to have any side effects. 
You also may want to consider low-level photomodulation. These are the hair or comb light therapies that you see on commercials sometimes. They actually do have pretty solid clinical evidence that they can help some forms of hair loss. And the tip that is definitely easier said than done is to try and reduce stress. Stress undoubtedly is something that can not only cause hair loss, but can worsen hair loss. And then you'll start to stress about the fact that you are now losing your hair. It becomes a very vicious cycle. So try your best to find some form of stress reduction. I sincerely hope that you found this video helpful. Please make sure to check out the resources listed down below. And until next time, guys, be well.